welcome to this England Football Learning PE episode. Today we will be looking to answer the question on the minds of PE coordinators up and down the country, how do we create and implement a high quality PE curriculum within our primary schools? During the episode we will be discussing what a bespoke PE curriculum might look like in your context, how we can deliver this and how we can support and influence other teachers and other staff in the school within a PE environment. My name is Ryan and I am delighted to be joined today by my colleagues Debbie and Chris who are going to be sharing their expertise and experience to help us to answer the question. So Chris, I'm going to come to you first with a, quite a broad question, but if a, if a teacher has been given that responsibility of being the PE coordinator within their school, what do you see as their, their main role within that position? Um, so I think first and foremost it's a, it's a strategic position within the school in terms of the subject lead for that subject area and that curriculum. So I see it as very str strategic as opposed to just hands-on delivery. Um, so for me, I think it's that um, putting on, on the school um, in terms of a level of importance uh, and making sure it's a golden thread that runs throughout the school um, as a subject area. Um, and then I think under that, you've got a few things there around you know, creating um, a high quality curriculum offer and physical education offer that inspires your pupils and wants them to keep coming back to the PE lessons. Um, and then I think from a strategic point of view, we've got a few things around funding. Um, you've got the consideration of how you're going to spend the school sports premium money and how effective that's being used. Um, I think you've got responsibility for the staff um, to help them develop their confidence and competence to deliver physical education. Um, and then I think bigger than that, you've probably got that whole sort of purpose of PE and the whole philosophy be behind what you're doing as a school um, and what you're going after really from physical education. It's quite a big job. It <laughs> is. It's it quite is. a big job. It's a wonderful, rewarding job to have hold of a subject area as, as, as rich as physical education. Absolutely. And like you said, it's, you know, it's, it's a vital one within the school, isn't it? And, you know, we'll be looking to delve into, into some of those things and hopefully give a little bit of help and assistance to any PE coordinators who are obviously joining us today to, to really help them to, to do some of those things. So, Debbie, from your experience, um, what makes an effective PE coordinator then? Yeah, as Chris was saying, it's a massive responsibility for someone to have that role um, in terms of interpreting the curriculum. Um, they have so much to do in terms of the funding and all of that side of things, but also in terms of organisation. Um, you know, there's things to think about like after school clubs, competitions, transport. Um, so there's a really you know wide range of, of roles and responsibilities. Um, and for them to kind of take hold of. Absolutely. So something you both mentioned there is around curriculum, which is obviously at the heart of, of that role of being a, a PE coordinator. So, Chris, if we want to make a, a bespoke PE curriculum for our school, which is specific for, for us, then how might we go about it? What are some of the things that we need to consider if we're going to do that? Yeah, so I think this is a crucial piece um, of the role, really. Um, I think this is one of the biggest ones that I've found in my experience that PE leads need some help and support with. So hopefully today I might sort of give a few insights into that really. Um, so for the curriculum design of the school, I think it's got to be bespoke. It's got to be personalised and connected to that school. Um, I, I don't think curriculum maps should look the same from a school that's one mile up the road from your school. I think it should be different because you've got a different environment, you've got different staff, you've got different pupils. Um, so I think that's why that personalisation of, of your curriculum map um, comes in really because it's for your school uh, as opposed to a generic one. Absolutely. And I think I think that's key, isn't it? You know, understanding that, you know, my year three class in Yorkshire will look be very different to your three cl year class in Cumbria yeah. as opposed to yours in London, Debbie. And um, I think that's that's a key message to get across, isn't it? So Debbie, what are some of the things then that if we want to make it bespoke, what are some of the things that we might take into consideration? What makes our curriculum bespoke and unique to us? What are some of the things that a PE coordinator might want to consider? Well, every primary school, as soon as you walk in the door and into reception, um, there's always a list of you know school values. So can we, like geography is really important and 
um, where the schools are, but can we link the specific school values to our curriculum um, and you know make it really personalised to the school? Absolutely. So um, obviously we're fortunate in our roles to, to visit a lot of schools and you know we see those school values on websites and on uh, on the wall as we walk in. So what are some of the ones that you know are quite pertinent that you see? you know, in, in the different schools that you go into? What are some of those key words, those values that schools really want to embed? Teamwork is a, is a big one. Um, resilience, motivating. Um, I mean, you could, you could I go think on. respect is one, respect. isn't it? Respect yeah. often appears as one on, on school yeah. values, yeah. So things like, yeah, that respect, that kindness, that consideration, absolutely. And um, I think, you know, we might be biased, but I think that PE can probably bring out those values better than any other subject on the curriculum. And I think you know the PE coordinators who, who are joining us really have the opportunity, don't they, to, to really bring those out and look at right, how can our curriculum bring out and, and reflect what our school believe is really important. Um, I think you know, if, we, if we're going to use that as a starting point for designing the curriculum, I think one thing we do need to get on board is, is the rest of the staff in, in understanding. So Chris, any, any thoughts, ideas? If, we, if we're starting to look at our curriculum and think, right, we might start to incorporate some school values, we might start to incorporate um, some geography, the environment of our school, and, and start to curric create a curriculum which is really tailored for our children, then you know, how I, might we get the staff on board with that? Yeah, it's a good question, Ryan. Um, I think first and foremost, it's around um, how we emphasise the school values. And for me, the best way to do that is through learning intentions. So I think the school values have to become learning intentions within the curriculum map itself. And I think by doing that, they then don't become byproducts or something you know, that you're sort of trying to squeeze in, but you're not really thinking about it. So I think if they become learning intentions as much as developing attacking skills or developing fundamental movement skills, um, I think that's a crucial piece that helps the staff then make it front and centre uh, of their PE delivery. So for me, I think that's a really important point around learning intentions. Absolutely, and I think it's, you know, it's, it, it's making it explicit to the staff, isn't it? But also, therefore, making it explicit to the children. You know, if we're saying that resilience or being kind, considerate is really important in this school, then we're really making it explicit that, that, that we're going to bring that out in PE. And, you know, I know, Debbie, we've got, we've got a few games that, you know, that we deliver, haven't we, to, to start to bring some of those things out? Yeah, absolutely. And even um, linking it to maybe teachers who aren't as confident teaching PE, having that kind of, you know, the values-based um, approach takes away the fear factor. So Sorry. it's not looking at, oh, I'm not a football expert, how am I gonna um, deliver this? But maybe if the focus was on teamwork, okay, well, we can think about activities to incorporate that into the lesson. Um, and then it's building up confidence from there. Absolutely, and we, we encourage that, don't we, in terms of just you know, using games as vehicles to bring out these values, and you mentioned fundamental movement skills, you know, and again, taking away, like you said, that fear factor of having to know the rules of all these different sports or the, the techniques that you might need to, to dribble a football and taking that away and actually giving the children um, games that they can play to, to help develop some of these things we've talked about. So on that note, we're going to uh, watch one of, one of the games that you might use as part of your high quality PE curriculum. And then we'll have a little conversation and delve into some of the things that we've seen. This is the game. So, most people are going to be stood at one end, okay? And we're going to have one person in the middle wearing a pink bib that's over there. When I say bulldog, You've got to run to the other end without getting tagged by the person. We have got an area down here where the white spots are. If you want, you can go in there and the person who's the bulldog can't go in that area. So that's called a safe zone. Three, two, one, bulldog. Good. This time, I want you to try not to use the safe zone. Bulldog! Good, well done. That's a great run. So I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the safe zone out. I think we can do it. 
have a think what we need to do to get to the other end without getting tagged. I want you to be constantly looking for the tagger, for other people, all right? And I want you to be able to find that path. So now, we're gonna have a little bit of a challenge. We have got two bulldogs. So lots of scanning this time, you've got two people. So as soon as you've got past one, you need to scan to search for information and space to avoid the second person. If you get tagged now, you're gonna to come to me and you're gonna get a bib, and then we'll have more taggers. Okay, I want you to talk to your partner now, and I want you to tell them what can you do to avoid these two people? Three, two, one. The top level for today, you do those three things that we talked about, but now, you do it with equipment. We're gonna play with two taggers. You're tagging the person, or if they've got a ball, you're just gonna try and touch the ball. Go! There was an example of a game that we might deliver as part of a high quality P curriculum delivered by one of our colleagues, Chris Lowe, in a school in London. So if we think a bit from a context of a P coordinator, let's start to unpick some of those things that we saw in that video in the game that we can link to some of the conversations that we had uh, prior to seeing it. We talked about uh, a bespoke curriculum, incorporating school values, fundamental movement skills. What were some of the things that you saw in that video, Debbie? That school, um, one of their school values is resilience and I think a game uh, such as Bulldog really can uh, bring out a, a value like that. Um, when we think about the holistic approach and we want to try and hit all four corners of that, um, you know, we, we can look at the physical aspects, social and um, the psych aspects as well as the, I suppose, technical, tactical, you know, we can really shine a light on whatever um, side, side you like and um, even things like having a safe zone, I suppose encouraging risk taking um, is really important and if we can link those values into our games um, I think that's a really valuable um, lesson. I think something, something that was evident you know spending time within that school was that you know values like resilience like you've highlighted there were really embedded and it was something that the, the children were really conscious of and really understood what that meant and um, really enjoyed displaying that resilience. And I think that highlights some of the things that we talked about prior to watching the video around, you know, actually embedding within the school life th those, um, those things that the school really see as valuable. Um, Chris, anything from your point of view from, you know, what you, what you saw, saw in the video? Yeah, I think for me, the, the National Curriculum for Physical Education just stood out for me. Um, you know, fundamental movement skills, key stage one, a really important part of the learning journey at key stage one, to give them loads of those fundamental movement skills within a peer curriculum. Um, attacking and defending principles of play were in there, evaluating their own success when they're discussing with the taught partners. So for me, the national curriculum just stood out uh, as an area there, but I think one thing that's worth mentioning is we've got to have an attentional focus and not try and do too much. Um, I think the less is more approach is something to think about. So I think Chris had scanning, moving and avoiding as the three key words. Um, so that's got to be your attentional focus within that lesson for your teaching and learning interventions. Um, as opposed to trying to do everything and then maybe end up doing nothing, having a real focus on what you're going after in those lessons. You, you've taught in, and you've mentioned the, the Key Stage 1 National Curriculum for PE there. And, you know, as we know, the, there aren't any specific sports mentioned on the Key Stage 1 National Curriculum for PE. But 
a game like Bulldog that we've seen delivered in a safe environment and a safe context, how many sports are we actually developing by playing that? Uh, well, the list, the list is endless, I think, really. I, I think for me, the, um, it's thinking about what do I want the pupils to learn, first and foremost, and the game or activity I choose is almost the last thing I think about. So I'm not having my curriculum that dictated to by a sport or an activity. I'm thinking about what I want the pupils to learn and then I'm choosing an appropriate game that's going to allow that to happen and not get in the way for some pupils maybe. Absolutely and I think you know if we look at that national curriculum developing those fundamental movement skills like agility that we've seen there um, and, and we take that and the attacking and defending skills that you've mentioned um, I think you know if we're, if we're constantly developing our children to develop those fundamental movement skills they know something about attacking and defending and we're starting to build you know resilience like you've mentioned Debbie and the other values that might be important to the school then like you're saying we're setting them up to not just for life but for playing any sport that they want aren't we? Yeah I, I think for me that's a football game that's developing football skills that game of Bulldog there's no football involved and they're not playing football but the list of football skills they are developing that they will need when they come to play a game of football is endless in that video. Absolutely and I think it's 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 getting away from that, that idea that football skills are just passing a ball and dribbling a ball and shooting and actually all the other things that encompass being a successful footballer. And Debbie, we've seen Chris in the video make lots of adaptations within the game. So I just wondered if there's anything you'd picked out and um, maybe that stood out to you as to why you might have done that and, and what effect that had on the, on the game that they were playing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think it's really important to mention at this point the step principle um, and how we can incorporate that into our lessons um, and adapt them you know, because we want our high quality PE lessons to be inclusive um, so that all the, all the children that we're working with really have the opportunity to develop fundamental movement skills um, so that they, they can be, you know, incorporated into other activities and, and sports as, as they go on. Um, you know, thinking about the simplicity of, you know, it starts as a tag game um, and then can we include equipment in that, whether that be balancing or, you know, bouncing the ball. And then, you know, we talk about, um, you know, movement and transferring those skills into different sports. So, yes, it could be a football game, but also it could easily be basketball or netball or, or handball. I think that, you know, the step principle that you, you mentioned there, and obviously there's lots of you know, we've got lots of resources that, that the PE coordinators can tap into around that. And I think that's a really good one for, for the PE coordinators, you know, watching today to really start to work with their staff around, isn't it? In terms of that simple method of adaptive teaching to, to change a game, to make it harder, make the challenge easier, whatever it might be appropriate at that time. Anything from your point of view, Chris, from the adaptive teaching that you saw in the video? Yeah, for me, PE is for everybody. Um, so it's not just the gifted and talented, it's about every child in my class and how I can support their learning journey while they're with me in my year group uh, and then throughout the life course of the primary school. But the step principles are a really simple framework just to, to grab onto and use and make some very simple changes that's going to make sure that everybody's challenged at their appropriate level, everybody can achieve some success and nobody's getting bored because it's too easy either. Absolutely, absolutely and that's the key isn't it and you know hopefully if, we, if we're doing that then we're developing that lifelong love of a subject, that lifelong love of PE, of sport and, and of being active in, in every child. Um, I'm sure we could talk about this all day, you know obviously we're, we're all very passionate about helping to develop the, the PE coordinators and uh, within their role and, and helping them to influence the staff. I'm going to finish with one final question for you both, so Chris I'll come to you first. If you had one piece of advice for a primary PE coordinator, what would that be? So in terms of developing that bespoke curriculum map, uh, it, it's an evolution rather than a, a revolution piece of work, I think. And I think it, you're probably looking at a several academic years to make those changes, to evolve it and develop it into something that's inclusive, something that's bespoke to your school, something that's maybe based on your school values and is, is led by the national curriculum for PE. But it's, it's definitely a journey, not something that happens overnight. Fantastic. Anything to add to that? Deb? Well, firstly, I mean, wow, what a, a job, what an opportunity and a privilege, I suppose, to, to be in that position, um, to be able to develop curriculums and have that influence on, on the children. Um, advice, I'd say, you know, connect with other people. It's about having those communities of practice to share ideas, um, you know, things that went well, things that maybe aren't working, um, and really just to support each other and, and help each other um, in that journey.
fantastic. Debbie, Chris, thank you very much for your time and expertise today. Uh, for everybody out there watching, we hope you've enjoyed it and it's given you plenty to think about and some support within your role as a P coordinator within a primary school.